Prophet you will not enter Jannah until you believe and you will never believe until you love each other. And this is the essence of love. And this reminds me of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said in that beautiful hadith, Verily, Muslims to another Muslim, Muslims to their brothers are like parts of one single body. If one part is diseased, then the rest of the body then tries to cure it by becoming hot, by being sick, by feeling sick. And this is exactly the way we should be. How can we rest today when our brothers and sisters are not resting? How can we feel satisfied today when our brothers and sisters are not satisfied? How can we go to bed with our tummies full and by Allah with us having a great, great, Rest by Allah tonight. How can we do that when thousands and millions of our brothers and sisters from Darfur to Chechnya to Kashmir to, to Palestine and you name it are going through some of the most difficult times by Allah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, I ask you all to feel brotherhood in your heart. Brotherhood and sisterhood of Islam, this love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planted in our hearts is the most beautiful thing that by Allah, it's a pleasure, it's a gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Umar to go for Umrah. So Umar radiallahu anhu went for Umrah. When he went for Umrah, he caught Umar's hand and he grabbed it in his hand and he said, Ya akhi, la tansana min dua Ya salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling Umar radiallahu anhu, Ya akhi, my brother, do not forget me in your dua. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, Wallahi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said a word and he called me a word for which I would sacrifice the heavens and the earth if Allah had given it to me. What was it? Ya akhi, my brother. My brothers and my sister in Islam, Brotherhood and sisterhood is one of the most valuable things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. It is stronger than blood. It is stronger than the ties of kingship. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, we are all from each other. Stronger in ties by Allah than ties of blood. In the beautiful incident that has been reported by Ibn Hisham in his seerah, it was reported that in the Battle of Badr, in the battle of Badr, Musa ibn Umair radiallahu anhu was passing by while some of the people, the POWs in the battle of Badr had their hands tied up. So Musa ibn Umair passed by a man and a man had his hands tied up very, very hard. So Musa passed by and he saw this man, this Ansari was tying his hands up. So Musa ibn Umair said, Ya Akhi, my friend, tie his hands harder. This man, his mother is rich. She will pay a lot of money. So this man looked up and said, Musab, I'm your brother, blood brother. Do you know what Musab said? <coughs> Musab said, Uskut, innahu akhi Keep quiet. He is my brother today rather than you. My brothers, my sister Islam, this is what brotherhood is. It transcends all blood barriers. This is what brotherhood is. It transcends every single relationship that we have. Brotherhood transcends every single thing because our brotherhood and our sisterhood in our religion, by Allah, this cannot be beaten. Umar radiallahu anhu, it was reported that there was one thing that would cause Umar to not sleep well. Umar used to say, I always used to sleep well except when I remember two of my brothers, Mu'ad ibn Jabal and Abu Ubaid ibn Jabrah. He said, I used to love these two brothers of mine so much that whenever I remembered them, I could not sleep at all. My brothers and sisters in the audience, do you have friends like that? People that you love so deeply and dearly, you wish that they were your brother and sister in blood. Because subhanAllah, this is what brotherhood and sisterhood is. That by Allah, you can hardly sleep 
except if you're in their presence or with them or have met them, subhanAllah. When the believers are on the Qantara, which is the last plane before the gates of the Day of Judgment, gates before Jannah, then it is reported that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will at that point divide between the believers and fix their problems with each other. So at that point, any believer who has a problem with another believer will say, Oh God, this person, he wronged me. So Allah will say, take his good deeds and put your bad deeds to him. So he will fix up the relationships in that manner. So the hadith narrates that two men will be brought out. One man who is a friend of the other. And at that point, Allah will say, did anyone wrong each other? And one of the men, the first man will say, yes, oh Allah, this man, this friend of mine, he wronged me. So Allah will say, okay, take his good deeds. So the man number one starts taking all the good deeds from man number two. Takes, takes deeds, takes deeds. And then Allah says, is there more? Yes, oh Allah. He said this to me on that day, he did that to me on that day. So he keeps taking his good deeds until that man has nothing but bad left of him. And the man, the first man says, oh Allah, there's still more wrong that he has done. So Allah will say, therefore put your bad deeds on him until the man number one starts putting his bad deeds onto man number two, until subhanallah, man number one only has good and man number two has only bad. And what is the destiny of those people who have only evil deeds? is Jahannam, isn't it? And what's the destiny of the one who has only good deeds? is Jannah, isn't it? So at that point, Allah subhanahu wa listen to this hadith, listen to it attentively. This is the only thing you take back from today. Then by Allah, it is beneficial. It is said that in authentic hadith, in Sunnah al in this acceptable hadith, that Allah will tell this man, oh so and so to this first man, oh so and so, I will give you this and that, and I'll give you this and that, I'll increase you in Jannah, this and that, and you are meant for this level, but I'll increase you to that level. And the man, every time Allah will say this and that, and more and more reward, the man will start smiling and getting happier and happier. And he will say, oh Allah, why oh Allah are you giving me all of this? Allah says one condition. What's the condition? That you forgive your brother. So the man will cry. And he will say, Wallahi ya Rabb, by your izzah and your jalal, by your greatness and your knowledge, I have forgiven my brother. So alhamdulillah, they make up. The hadith doesn't finish. Watch this. At this point, this first man will start to walk into paradise. The hadith narrates that he will be stuck at the gates of paradise and he will not be allowed. So he will look up to God and say, Oh God, what happened? I thought you let me enter paradise and I have only good deeds and I've forgiven my brother. Let me enter. And Allah will tell him, Enter into Jannah with your brother's hand in your hand. La ilaha illallah. Inna mal mu'minuna ikhwa fa asliha bayna akhawayn. لا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفا حفرة من النار فأنقذكم منها